What's up, guys? Welcome back to another beautiful interview for Rise of Bay Podcast. And for interview 87, I got Bentley Budget Built. I had to get to it because we had to do a little redo just before we started because my head is all over the place. I'm always doing stuff and I don't, I've known this dude since I was like 16. So and, um, for him to even take dedication to hop on the Rise of Obey podcast, it means a lot. Um, but let me reintroduce this man as his name. Okay, for interview 87, I got Bentley. Keep the last name out for government. <laughs> <laughs> but how you been, bro? You been, been pretty good? good. Yeah, dude, good. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, we talked a little bit before this. It was, it got a lot worse before it got a lot better. But yeah, we're here no, now, so. <laughs> I'm proud of you, man. If you guys known this guy since we were little, bro, this man has grown up to be a beautiful human, bro. And he's come a long way just as much as all of us have. And um, for real, just, dude, it's, it's an honor, man. Um, let's get to it, though, man. Let's get to just where were you born? Uh, I was born here, actually. I believe it was right in uh, North Charleston. So, okay. yeah. Not what to, part not of, like, away. if you don't mind, like... I not... don't remember the exact hospital. Okay. But I do know I'm just here. Well, I meant, like, was it, like, near, like, uh, let's say, Ashley Phosphate? Or was it, like, you know, what what, what area of North Charleston? <sighs> I, really, I kind of really, do something I, different. Yeah, I really don't remember, to okay. be honest. I just know it was here, and then I grew up in Goose Creek. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Been here. North Charleston's big. North Charleston is quite big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some people that don't live here or even know what North Charleston is don't even know, you know what I mean? Yeah, so absolutely. I just wanted to kind of dig into the people yeah. that didn't know. I guess I, I don't remember exactly where it was. I, I, I'm pretty sure it was like right across from an O'Charlie's. So I don't know if that O'Charlie's is still there, but wherever there's a hospital in O'Charlie's nearby, <laughs> <that's where> it <laughs> that's was. So I'm pretty true. sure my mom was at work. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, shout out to mom. But no, yeah. um, for real, man, how do you think, like, uh, growing up in North Charleston can, like, re 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 I can't even say the word. Uh, I guess would you say, I want to say make you who you are now. To yeah. Say. I, wanted, I wanted to say a different word, but obviously I can't say Well, we moved to Goose Creek. I was, like, less than a year old. And then we moved, like, one subdivision over. Uh, when I was like six and we actually still live in that house. I moved out for a while and I've since moved back But yeah, I mean I'm in the house I grew up in in my childhood bedroom again, which is pretty crazy mm -hmm. uh, But is yeah, there anything like particular that you remember growing up though Like maybe in elementary school middle school range of being in North Charleston because North Charleston is crazy Yeah, North Charleston is wild. Like is there anything um, that kind of made you look at life differently at a young age? <sighs> Honestly, not that I can think of that was super influenced by the environment. No, I, I don't think so. Um, but I was, I guess sheltered would be a good word as a kid. Like, not like intentionally. I just, I generally have kept to myself. I don't yeah, get good out parents. a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. My, uh, well, my dad's pretty good. Uh, but I don't talk to my mom. Stepmom's great. Right. But yeah, you know, you know how it goes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I, just, I didn't get out a whole lot. It really wasn't until high school I really started changing like up, getting out, now, like world. talking to people and everything. Okay. Yeah. And really just recently, earlier this year was, I took my first plane ride. I'd never been on a plane before this wow. year and went to Denver. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, we were talking about Yeah, 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 because yeah. I know you're going Denver. out there. But yeah, even so. before Denver and all that stuff, because I do want to kind of ask you some stuff about yeah, that. Yeah, go for it. Where'd you go to elementary school at? Cause Westview. Westview? Yep. Okay, so Westview. that's like Goose Creek type deal, right? Yeah, yeah. I went to, uh, before kindergarten, uh, St. Timothy's. Uh, my, my dad grew up Baptist, so because of that, I was, it was like a daycare. So I was in, uh, right by the Goose Creek family dentistry, actually. And I'm like, well, well there's a little St. Timothy's there. Went there, and then I went to Westview Primary, Elementary, and Middle and then I went to Stratford for high school. Okay. Was there any like thing that you kind of like would say resembles of what you do now, like you're a computer technician? So is, like, were you doing anything in the realm at that age? Oh, dude, I've always been Like, were you the kid with like, the little toy that was like, had the circle and the X and you're like, eh, eh. Or, like, <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite that. Um, so really what helped me a lot was I have an older half brother who's 16 years older than me. And he's super in tech and a bunch of nerdy stuff. So that kind of like nerdy. I actually want to, I don't mean to cut you off. Let's nerdy get to the nerdy thing real quick. Yeah. That's a different type of conversation. Do you classify yourself as a nerd though? I think, so, I think yeah. it's still like, I, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like nerd has been like out of context lately. Yeah, I mean, a lot you know of people I mean? think nerd and they think like the frail guy that like. Because you're normal, causes. like a nerd is normal <laughs> human being just like us. They're just yeah. more intelligent if they just be keeping it a buck. But, yeah, I know? mean, I, and, and it's with certain things. Like, there's definitely a bunch of things that I, I don't understand. Like, quantum mechanics, sure, I'll sit down and talk about that. But I mean, there, there's plenty of things that I sit down and I'm like, I'm not super versed in it. It's just what interests me, you know? Yeah. Uh, Were you called a nerd in like elementary school and stuff like that? Yeah, but on the so I wasn't. A, I'm not a traditional nerd. I I, I don't I don't sports. <laughs> it's usually the way I go about it. Like I'm not super into sports. You said that earlier. Like, I, I was like, earlier, I've yeah. never heard that before. Um, I however, sports. I grew up doing martial arts. I was in taekwondo. I did that for like eight years. Okay. So that's sports, though. It is a sport. Yeah, it's just not like a team sport that a lot of people watch. And I don't really watch a whole lot of UFC. 
uh, or MMA or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm so, I'll catch like highlights every now and then, and that's interesting. But no, I don't usually sit down and watch it. But because of that, I, I didn't get picked on a lot because it was like. Uh, I might be a nerd, but I oh, well, can also roundhouse kick you in the yeah. face. Yeah, <laughs> have you had any like, crazy situations? We'll have to talk about it. No, first, not, but... not really. Um, I've, I've done my fair share of fighting. If you know me in Stratford, I've had like crazy incidents. No, stuff, I never got in fights in school. That's I good pretty though, much man. just kept to myself. Man, we don't need to fight nobody. He's going <laughs> to no. build you. <laughs> I was pretty, I mean, I think I was pretty chill. I had like, I didn't have like a huge like core group of friends, but like I was the guy at lunch that would just walk around and talk to whoever, yeah. you know, like I, I did band in middle school, so I had some friends in Where'd band. Where'd you go to middle school at? Westview. West, oh, Westview. So, yeah, oh, all that was Westview. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. so Westview had an elementary school too? They had, yeah, and they had a primary, an elementary, and a middle. What? I yeah, so it was that. kindergarten through third grade was primary, and then fourth and fifth was elementary, sixth through eighth was middle, and then you would go to Bro, I've lived <laughs> I've lived here my whole life. I've never known that. I feel dumb. I feel like some people probably ask me that and I've asked like the same thing. And, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like the, you're not dumb. It's it, ignorance and dumb is very different. It, you just don't know. No, you didn't no, go no. there. You ha you don't have kids still, that are going there. So. That yeah, true, but that why true. would you know that? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I went to Stratford and you know, when you're hanging around people and they're all like, who'd you go to middle school with? And you're like, Westview. And then I don't know. I yeah. feel like elementary school is not the question you ask. When yeah, you're nobody you know, so, so far. No, but that's cool, man. Let's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's escalate into that because I'm Obviously, I know you went to Stafford. Yeah. You know? Shout out to Stafford. Um, are you glad you went there? Because it was definitely a handful. Stafford was wild. I feel like that's when life like changed. Even probably, for, I know it changes for yeah. a lot of people in high school. But like seriously, I feel like reality check was. Yeah, in high I mean, school. it's definitely not like a terrible school, but it was one of those things. Like you know, you're a kid and you're watching like movies or TV shows, and you see the crazy stuff that high schoolers get into, and you're like, oh yeah, that's like just... the grassy. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it wasn't like I mean, the, a guy got tased <laughs> like yeah. in the courtyard one yeah. time. You know, there was people that were getting in fights. Uh, all Every kinds day. of just craziness was going on. Which was probably happening, occurring all over the world. Oh, though, for sure. You know? But it's just yeah. still like being able to say that we saw what we saw. I've only went to Stratford for only like a year, basically, oh, in my yeah, time period. Yeah. And I saw I saw more than I've ever seen. But Wanda was crazy, too. Wanda's wild. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I, my graduation class was like almost 1,800 people. So it was like just meeting the people in my grade and then meeting the other people was like... Yeah. I don't know, man. So, um, is there anything maybe you would want to give advice to a high school or even anybody who's like still kind of battling the high school and kind of trauma? Yeah, like, to actually. Be better so, life? a lot of people will tell you that high school is the best years of your life, and I, I just really disagree, mm. honestly. Like, I didn't have a bad time in high school, but I, I really think that my life has gotten so much better since then. What are some choices that, I don't mean to cut you off, no, I'm just yeah. trying to like yeah. attack, but what are some choices you think you've made to be better though? Cause like, it's easy to say what you just said and, and some people won't even take it in, but what were some changes you had to make to like, cause you're not the same Bentley I knew and I'm very proud of you bro. <laughs> no, for real, cause yeah. this world's crazy. Um, <laughs> Seriously. Holding accountability for yourself is a really big thing. I know that's something that a lot of people struggle with and something that, you know, like people would make excuses for themselves mm -hmm. and I've just kind of started, I don't know where I picked it up, but I have started telling myself it's like okay well are we gonna make progress there or are we gonna make excuses because you can't do both right. you know so that, that was a big thing taking accountability uh, working towards what I want setting goals for things and actively working towards them um, letting things go that you know you don't really need to hold on to anymore was big what's one big thing that you did let go and we don't have to dig that deep but um, just something like simple because for me i quit cigarettes i smoked cigarettes for almost two years ooh, if you know me yeah that's especially rough. working I did, I did too for a while i i quit them as well uh, which i thought was yeah. easy some people find it hard some people find it really hard so that's something that i struggle with too is uh like i have a really addictive personality mm -hmm. so like right now i'm super addicted to caffeine but if i just stop drinking caffeine i have like really bad withdrawals from everything even if i only do it one time mm -hmm. so that that's something that i like know i have to you i have to it's plan balance. a little bit farther yeah, yeah it's, it's like you know when, when you're younger and not that i'm super old or anything but it's like oh i can have a i'll have a couple of drinks tonight and be fine but now i'm like do I, what do i have to what do i have going on tomorrow <laughs> like yeah. i know i'm gonna have a hangover even yeah. for me like even if i drink one or two like i don't feel the same the next morning no, that's and i'm what, not as efficient but so. that's you being able to control your body because there's some days where people do like exceedingly amount of drinking and they won't recover for like two days yeah. people think that they recover the next day after they drink you a don't. lot you don't like, yeah. you, and that's why i don't like to drink because like you said one or two i feel it the whole next day yeah. i'm on the couch yeah 
like, coned up off two Bud Lights. That's yeah. why I do not yeah. drink. You well, know? your problem is to drink both of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a baby. But no, I, feel, I don't even drink, man. I, I yeah. honestly haven't had a drop in like three or four months. I just don't care for it, man. I'm more of a Mary Jane follower. But anyways, let's dig into after high school. Like, um, were you like doing anything other than computer stuff? Because I mean, you're... I fell out of the computer stuff, actually. So during high school and like end of middle school, my brother had that repair shop and I was working there, but then I, due to poor life choices, ended up not being with my family a whole lot and kind of just went off on my own, which part of that was me realizing that like, I wasn't ready to help myself and I didn't want to bring anybody close to me down with me. Yeah. So I left. I feel like that, that right there just shows you how your character is though. Cause like yeah. some people will bring other people down. Like I felt like my friend, uh, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, I love you. But I felt like a lot of my friends were making poor decision choices or life choices and bringing me with them. Yeah. And yeah. And that, like that's, yeah. that's a big, and I like, for real, I'm proud of you. Yeah. You, you really need to be careful who you're hanging around. There's an old saying. It's like, well, if you want if you want to, if you hang around five millionaires, you'll be the sixth. If you hang around five crackheads, You'll be the sixth. So you really do become who you hang around. Uh, you surround yourself with better people. And it, it is hard, especially if it's the people that you grew up with. But really, I mean, I know you've been doing a lot of getting out of your comfort zone and everything. And that, that's, that's a huge thing. If you're comfortable, you're not growing. You know, complacency is the biggest killer of progress I've ever seen. Um, and I know, I don't remember where this quote comes from either, but people, uh, there's a quote that goes that a steady paycheck and cheap entertainment is all that's needed to like pacify a man. Mm. Like, you know, you got steady money coming in, you're, you're entertained, it's cheap, you're going to chill. I don't have steady income right now because of the business I started, so I have to build that up. And you know, like that is a lot of my inter entertainment as well. I enjoy doing what I do. Let's talk about that. Bentley yeah. budget built. Like, what was that? How was the Navy even brought up? Because you got me in the beginning. I feel like it's <laughs> one of those, like, you know, where you have, uh, like, cat, cat, and cat, or something. Or yeah, you know, yeah, cat, yeah. cat, the, and the cat. Alliter alliteration. Yeah, stuff. That's where yeah. I was in the beginning. Like, oh man, I'm <laughs> it took that a stuff, man. But it's okay because yeah. it's like I really like I'm like. Uh, Albert Einstein with it, man. My mind, I'm always thinking of stuff. I'm already thinking about the motivational video. Right? No, <laughs> gotcha, I'm just always you. doing stuff. Yeah, but yeah. how was Bentley Budget Built made? So, after I started getting everything back together, my older brother has a, a security company that I work for, like security systems. Uh, so I was working. Like camera as, or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. basically, I was, uh, I had done construction work and then the 2020 thing happened. I got laid off and I was like trying to, you know, figure out life. My brother hit me up and was like, hey, I need help with this job. You, you want to come? I was like, yeah, sure. He's like, all right, cool. Meet me at this address this day, this time. That was all the information I got. Were you nervous? No. Or was it just something you were like, I'm not I, trying to be weird, I, but I'm about to get money from it. And you know, No, well, I knew I was going to get paid for it, obviously. Like, it, it was a job. And I had been asking my brother if he had any positions open. Um, but I, I kind of knew what was going on. Like, I knew he had the security company. So I was like, all right, we're going to be doing something. I don't know exactly what, but I, it's going to be some tech stuff and it's going to be fun. So I get there. You, you familiar with the Anson Borough House downtown? Right there on uh, Society I'll Street? I'll just say no because I'm okay. not a liar, but <laughs> I am familiar. Like, I've heard it before. So it's a, it's an assisted living home, but it's basically like a giant apartment complex, okay. essentially, but for the elderly. Well, I get there. It's like a six-story building, and it's my brother and two of his buddies. And I'm like, yo, what's up? And they're like, oh, we're installing 36 CCTV cameras. I like need help. Like ladder and all that stuff? Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. Like, we're running, like, in the hallways. Like, we need wire running from the top floor all the way down. So, gotta run into just the for some people who are still watching this, too, because a shout-out to you if you're still watching this. Um, can you explain, like, the process of how it all starts, like? to be able to install anything because some people may not even know what we're talking about yeah um honestly the so biggest you get thing to the job yeah right? so i get to the job and the first thing we do is uh you talk to the owner and the, the really the biggest thing so anybody that's getting a security system out there don't just go oh well you're the expert you know where to put the camera what do you want to see what needs to be seen and that's what we go around and look at we see what areas need to be covered um and everything like that we want to see the best way we can do it with the fewest amount of cameras possible basically uh, and then we were like, all right, cool. So this is where we need the cameras. Then we kind of get a general game plan of what we need, where we need the wires to go. And then we run all the wires. That takes like one morning or one Yeah, it usually takes about a morning. Usually people have a general idea. So it's just like us going around and like, all right, cool. Well, obviously this gate needs to be seen, this door, this door. And like this one, it was every, every floor was the same layout. So we figured out in the hallway where we would need to do it. And once we figured out where we needed to put the cameras in each hallway, they were all the same. Mm -hmm. So like, all right, cool. And we got lucky too. We're right above the office was a maintenance like closet and it already had wires running down. So like, cool, we're gonna fill them all down through So there. you just get the ladder, go in the closet, go up yeah. on the roof. Well, we didn't have to go up on the roof or anything. Well, no, not the main, uh, I meant the ceiling. Yeah, like the ceiling, yeah. And then, but okay. so what we, what we did was we have, the wire comes in like boxes. It's like a thousand feet. 
And so we set the box wherever we're gonna go and you, we started like, we needed two on the top floor. Mm -hmm. So we started there with two boxes and we dropped them down one floor. Then there was a guy down there with two more boxes that tied him to and like basically kept going like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it definitely makes it go faster. You can do it by yourself. The most fun part of that job was like running wire to the wall. It's like a big puzzle. You like That's taping it to game, rods man. and stuff. It, it, it can be, but it was. If I fun. can't remember bitly budget bills, how am I going to remember which wire goes where? Or what, uh, where? Sharpie, we, we we number them. But still, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just being <laughs> serious. Like I'm gonna be like all confused. I give y'all props. Anybody yeah. who's doing like wire work or anything, yeah. or cable work or um, just anything in that realm, bro. I give you flowers because my mind I'm always all over the place so no but like what's uh because we've talked about kind of how yeah. you install it but what is Bentley budget bills mainly like what is your main priority so yeah so I know you were explaining how it kind of started while I was doing that I was doing computer work on the side I've always done like you know a little bit like hey you know like no phones or just strictly like what um, was I've it? done some phones every now and then but so you I were know on call like just anything uh, like Bentley budget build. No, because this was bef this is how this got started. But this was before I like really decided to run with it. Oh, it was you know like okay. my family would need computer stuff done, or like you know my, my friend would be like, hey, I need this done. And then the only thing I didn't like about that job was how much driving I had to do. Mm -hmm. I would have to go to like Columbia Myrtle Beach like every now. And then. Yeah, like it was it was driving. Excuse me. But so uh, I leaned more into the, the computer stuff because I had done it. I knew I had some people that needed the help with it. Da da da. And I decided to, I knew I needed uh, a name and initially the repairs weren't what I wanted to lean into. I really wanted to focus on helping people transition from console gaming into computer gaming or like uh, parents who their kids want a computer. Mm. You want to buy a new Xbox, you just go buy the Xbox, you buy Xbox games. Right. Buying your computer is so different. There's so many components. Like you can't just go buy one and then it plays everything. So like what are the main like pieces that you need to just have an operating PC? So there's only seven pieces. So I mean obviously you got your case, you've got your power supply, you've got your CPU graphics card, uh, motherboard, and RAM and then hard drive or solid state. So there's only a couple pieces and it really isn't that hard to physically build the computer. The hard part is knowing, okay, I've got this motherboard, it's compatible with these CPUs and like how much power does this whole system need? What kind of power supply do I need? What games am I going to play? What settings am I running at? What, you know, do I need a 3060? Do I need a 3090? What's a one big like complication or even issue that you've seen happening, occurring in computers and stuff? The biggest, PCs, the biggest thing I see is, and this happens in a lot of industries, like if you were to go to a store right now and you're gonna buy a pre-built computer, the person on the sales floor makes a commission off that usually. Right. So they even want- Even Best Buy? I don't know for a fact. I don't know if they're Best Buy people. I don't like, know. I would imagine they do in, in, in some way. Yeah. But that's like my main concern is people that like, you want to come buy a PC, I want to tell you the, you know, the most yeah. expensive one possible. Yeah. But there's certain things, like a lot of people have the argument of Nvidia versus AMD graphics cards, right? Nvidia cards are more expensive. But it's because they're better. Like generally, just across the board, they are better. So is that what you AI need technology. to be able to run like a Warzone? You don't need it. You can run them on AMD graphics cards, but you need to know which one. If that makes sense, yeah. like I'm not a computer. Person, yeah, yeah, so and and, and that that's that's what I'm here for. I don't yeah. want to, you know, like that's... Bentley budget. <laughs> tap in with my dog. <laughs> Thanks, real. appreciate it. But yeah, that's you know the thing. If I actually have a form that I, I actually probably send you and show you, it's like yeah. a job form. You go on and you fill it out. Give me your like your name and information. You let me know your budget and what games you're wanting to play and at what settings. And that's that'll let me know, you know, okay, cool. You want to play Warzone? Warzone doesn't require a whole. It's not super intensive to run, to be honest. So you so don't need like anything super off? crazy. Is that what it is? Tore off. Escape from Tarkov. Yeah, Tarkov. Escape from Tarkov. Yeah, over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, no. I watched too much Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, or even just. Uh, What's another game? Uh, what's another game that's like super intense? Oh, like Cyberpunk when it came yeah. out. You know, super super graphic intense and everything. Um, or even eSport titles. So a really big, amazing thing with eSports, Valorant or like CSGO or whatever. Mm -hmm. When they make those games, they want them to be run on as many systems as possible right. because they want a bigger audience. So you really don't need a 4090, which is like a $1,500 graphics right, card right. to play Valorant, yeah. you know, and that's also or stuff Overwatch. like Overwatch. Yeah, that too, same yeah. same concept, but that's what but I see a also, lot. Also, this is something, shout out to Frank behind the lens. If you are on PC, you're beating every single console, console person. Do you think that's a big issue too in gaming? Because think about it, you go on Call of Duty, if that person has a faster, what is it? 
Like, you could ping, a, yeah. a mouse is just better at aiming. Yeah. But there's also no aim. But assist. no, the ping and the connection is always going to oh, be better. Oh, uh, not necessarily. No. no, no, that's not necessarily true. Okay, um, that's the first. No, yeah, ping and connection. It, that's just how close you are to the server, mm -hmm. basically. But so. you, you know what I'm talking about, though, like the fighting games. I guess I would say, like, or even. Yeah, I mean, if it's rendering faster. So I think what you might be talking about is like frames per second, mm -hmm. like your FPS. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like a lot of like uh, Starfield just came out. Right? Yeah. The new, the yeah, new uh, Bethesda game. game. It's locked. At, I'm pretty sure it's locked at 30 FPS on on Xbox because the Xbox, you know, like it only has so much. It's got the hardware that it has in it, yeah. so it can, they're gonna lock it at 30 FPS for the best experience. Mm -hmm. That is something you can do on PC, where if you have the high end and you've got the really you know expensive stuff that runs things really well, I can run it at 60 FPS. Mm -hmm. So that's that. That's something that's a little different. That does play a factor in like Warzone. Like I've seen people that used to play like the first Warzone. You can see farther if you have a better PC. Oh, so yeah, yeah, it yeah, is yeah. kind of pay to win in that aspect. So you uh, don't own a console yourself. Uh, we have an Xbox. I have I have a lot of consoles. Well, series I got an N sixty four in my house. You know, so, what the hell yeah. is that? I got a Nintendo sixty four. I got a PlayStation two. I've got a regular Xbox. I've got an Xbox Series X. Um, I don't have any pl any any like newer PlayStations. I had a PS3, but it, it busted. Mm -hmm. And then in total, there's three desktop PCs in my house. Wow. I have one. My little stepbrother has one, and he actually streams. He's so I know y'all's uh, what is y'all's Wi-Fi is probably dumping right now. Uh, yeah, I'm wired in. So like uh, real quick back to the cameras. The same yeah. wire that they run is the Ethernet wires, which mm -hmm. is the same thing that you plug into your Wi-Fi. So yeah, I actually my bedroom is right above where our router is. So I drilled a hole out. And ran a wire down and tucked See, it in the that's vinyl. You, <laughs> that's you being able to so I'm wired in, bro. The camera stuff. So, yeah. do you think that's helped you doing anything in computer technician? Oh yeah. yeah. So the biggest thing, if you want to get into doing like computer hardware, any kind of computer engineering role, shout out to Mr. Eason from Stratford. I don't know if he's still there or not, but he was a huge part of that. And it's problem solving. Yeah. That's the biggest thing you need because people come to me sometimes. They're like, "Oh, my computer's not working. It's doing this. Fix it." And I'm like, "Okay, well." It could be this, 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 or this. So I have to just start at the top of the most no, common things yeah. and then work down through it, you know? So How, how long is the step? Is it like, can you talk about it real quick? Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on what the issue is. Like a lot of times people go, okay, my computer's running slow. So the first thing I'll do is I'll boot it up and go, is there any like anything that looks like malware, like viruses on there? That's, that's a really big cause. If it doesn't look like there's anything that shouldn't be on there, usually the next step is I'll start kind of checking, all right, like, Probably hard drive. Mm -hmm. Usually, that those are like the two things. Or is dust, hard right? drives going on. Dust is a big Dusty thing. can usually that'll cause like overheating, which can start to slow it down. Yeah, which dude, clean your laptops, guys. Yeah. Like I don't. People don't clean their laptops. Like outside. Um, I think the most interesting thing I found that usually blows people's mind is I clean a lot of computers with soap and water, yeah. like the plastic. We have a little spray bottle and it's just regular soap and water. I'll spray it on the rag and you can wipe down the plastic. Don't dump it into the components. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like that's not what you want to do at all. But yeah, so that's actually one of the biggest things that I've done is uh, eat, like whenever people come to me and they drop off a laptop after I work on it, I'll also clean it off and it's it looks so much like nicer when they get it back. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I just rag. <laughs> like, I think it's just a, that just shows you how serious they don't take their... Uh their type of their equipment, their, yeah. you know, because if you're doing that with the, the uh, laptop, then imagine what you do with your shoes and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes too, it is just ignorance. Yeah. You, you yeah. just don't know. Like yeah. most people do. Whenever they ask me, "What do I clean with?" and I say soap and water, they're like, "What?" Yeah, like that doesn't like, make any sense to them. No, they're so. Shocked. Yeah. I, I mean, I would do it anyways. You'd catch me. I accidentally <laughs> messed up. You know, like how cars have the new manual, like the screen thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was cleaning it with soap and water, and mm -hmm. for like a week, it just stopped working. I was like, <gasps> no. And then it just started working again. But it's yeah. just seriously, like, if you really just take care of your stuff, that's even from gaming controllers to just anything. Like, yeah. I don't know, your your laundry, your dishwasher or washer, I don't know. Take care of your stuff. I had to just say that because it's serious. But, it um, is. But no, dude, I wanted to say, like, is there anything you would give advice to to any future uh, computer technician or maybe anybody interested in doing anything in computers? Yeah, I mean, computers. Some people don't know how to get themselves in it. So, like, maybe what's one advice to getting yourself into it? I mean, and this goes for anything. A big thing. It, it, it's not always what you know. It's who you know. That's I've right. had so many jobs. Like, when I first moved out, I didn't know how to cook super well. So I got a job as a cook, and I got paid to cook and learn how to cook. 
I wanted to, I want to eventually, I would love to like either, you know, buy my own house or even start like remodeling and flipping houses. That'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, you were saying something about power washing too. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with like the, the construction company I worked at, we installed like shelves, mirrors, shower doors, shower, like all kinds of stuff, insulation. So I know how to do a lot of like house work as well, like maintenance and everything. So you can go and like get jobs and learn how to do things and get paid to do them. I myself saw college as kind of a scam at this point mm -hmm. because I know so many people that have college degrees that can't find work because they don't have they're experience. They're in debt. They're in debt. And they're in experience, stupid debt. And they have to work a job yeah. just to be able to live yeah. up to the, you know. So my initial plan was uh, I, I I do some game development here and there, and I was doing it in high school to the point where I was actually taking one of the computer programming classes in my junior year, mm -hmm. and I like I, I knew it all. Yeah. This the it was a computer programming one and two it was like in the same room and they did it at the same time mm -hmm. I already knew both because they were using the c-sharp language and that's what I use to code games in unity mm -hmm. so I'm like dude I've already been using this for like two years yeah. I I I've already taught myself my dog was already heard of the game. yeah I was did like they look already... at you weird though like did they give you like come like like some type of like whoa like you know like Michael Jordan mm, not not he might really. be the Michael Jordan of computers bro <sighs> I don't know if I'd go that far, but I think what it was too, the other people that were in the computers were kind of in the same boat, and then the people that were there just because they had to take that class didn't care. Yeah. They're like, oh yeah, they're like, so oh, that's you were cool. taking it like top notch serious, or was it just something? Well, not that, that class at that point. Eat. Yeah, that, uh, it's always kind of just come to me because I'm interested in it, and you'll find that with anything. If if you enjoy doing something, if you want to go do it, you'll you'll pick it up a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. And I've always been interested in tech and all kinds of things. I mean, like I remember playing uh, Jack Two from the Jack and Daxter yeah, series. Yeah. The hoverboard on there, oh dude, super cool. So like, you were what age was it when you kind of knew what you really wanted to do in your life? I think when I first started working with my brother, I was like, yeah, this is probably what I'll do. How old were you? 12, 13. Okay. Yeah, uh, like eighth grade. I job shadowed him and I remember it was before he had he had the shop we were like fixing phones on his kitchen table uh, started with the iPhone 4 I was saying because I don't think you can just unscrew them no more like that. yeah you can you actually can? the new iPhones are even easier wow a 4 was a nightmare you had to disassemble the whole phone That's you took crazy. the screws out the back came off you pulled everything out had to put it all back together um, honestly it's most of what I do in terms of the hardware doing the work itself isn't that difficult. The difficult part is knowing how hard can I push here? What mm -hmm. where what cable might I rip? Like where do I need to put everything? Have you had anything happen to where it was like, oh shoot. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, and of you course. Had to replace my egg. Yep. I feel yeah. bad for you guys. Yeah. Because I know they were probably upset. Yeah, well I mean and that that is a big thing too, is like I said, going back to taking accountability, man. Like if say I'm in somebody's iPhone and I uh so right when you take the, the two screws on the bottom up, you pull the thing up, there's like a little plate that covers the cables. Yeah. There's four screws in it. They are fractions of a millimeter different in length. You cannot tell the difference with the naked eye. Mm. If you put them in the wrong spot, you bork the phone. Because wow. it'll, it'll hit something that it's not I supposed do to hit. That. That uh, obviously it was from trial and error. Because we borked the board. <laughs> How many phones did you bork the board? Uh, just one, and then you know you kind of start looking it up. Like honestly, the biggest thing we did is YouTube. Yeah. Like straight up, because at this point, I know I can fix phones. I can fix computers. Yeah. People come to me, hey, this phone screen's broken. Okay, well the screen costs this much. I have a flat rate that I charge for labor. I usually try to make between like forty and sixty dollars an hour on mm -hmm. labor, mm -hmm. which uh, the national average for computer hardware labor is between forty and one hundred and fifty dollars per hour. That's crazy. It's yeah. insane. So is that your like main mission though is to get to that top tier pay or are you just no, kind of just doing No, it really isn't. Uh what I'm doing isn't very scalable uh by any means. Like part of the reason I can have lower costs than Best Buy, uh, especially on like building computers is mm -hmm. I'm only paying myself. Mm -hmm. Versus Best Buy for a computer to be built, you know, they build them somewhere so they got to pay that guy, they got to ship it to the store. They got to pay everybody at the store that's, you know, stocking and the salespeople Just the and the whole registers. Life, yeah. There's a lot going on and a lot more people that have to get paid. Whereas me, I do it all. I do everything. Now, that said, I can't run three stores by myself. No, <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, never so. say never because you actually might, bro. This man is a millionaire in the process, bro. Because you are doing like, No, you're smart, bro. And I Thanks, feel like bro, you have a good community who helps you because you also do gaming. 
Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah I do, do like the whole gaming stuff. thing. Can you yeah. tell people about that too? Uh, What's yeah. The name? So I work with a company, or I have done work with uh, Latency as well as they have acquired Frost Esports. They do a bunch of tournaments and stuff like that. Latency is also. Have a you been part company. of the tournaments too, or is it just? I actually did. Just I like... competed in the Halo tournament, the wow. Halo Infinite personal that we did, and How the team was with. Uh, uh, we won. It was a pretty good match. So. Was it like competitive to your level, or was it more of like just? Fun? Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of teams that it was like our first tournament okay. but we had a couple people and it was super funny like the way we were getting people to do it it's like we were just hopping in random discord it's like hey you guys want to run a tournament and people yeah. were like sure yeah like it's free just jump in that's how you do so, it though. yeah and uh yeah networking is definitely like the most powerful tool you ever have like right. person to person networking not like computer networking no <laughs> but no there's some people i've met some guy um shout out to Devin k we met from apex we played apex for yeah. two years and then i flew out or i drove out to ohio and met him so yeah. it's like those communication or ne uh, connections over online and stuff are actually really powerful man. yeah it's basically like the way i like to put it to people is a lot of these games it's the same thing as if you were to go down the street and play a game of pickup basketball. Mm -hmm. Except now instead of just the people in your neighborhood or your community, it's worldwide. Yeah. Dude, I've got a buddy that lives up in like the northern part of Canada that'll like randomly post like, oh, I saw the Aurora Borealis tonight. It was crazy. He's like a park ranger up there. Right. I've got people out west coast. Uh, two of my good buddies live in Brazil. Like, I, all over the world. So and is that like something your gaming company or your... The community is trying to like expand to is like the international level yeah i know one thing i, I know maverick's got a, a couple things that he's working on um, i've been trying to get frank behind the camera to come talk to mav because i know he wants to do some fighting tournaments so yeah. you should definitely talk with him um he'll definitely help you out there yeah. but i think a big thing that most of the people i hang around now at this point kind of revolves around helping other people right Be and you know like a big thing that i've learned is obviously money is important like you do need money to survive but Money should never be your goal. Yeah. Money will be a byproduct right. of your goal. Right, right. So that's something that's helped me out a lot. Like going in and doing. Uh, I did realize that instead of I, building and selling computers takes a lot. It uh, takes a lot of capital. That requires personal. money. It does require yeah, money. Yeah, because not the normal yeah. person knows how to do that. Yeah. Like, well, and then computer. like the repairs too. It does cost a bit of money, but it's it's one of those things too. If I'm helping people in the process. Mm -hmm. So that's that's been nice. I can get a little bit of money to do something I like and to help other people save some money and get their. Have you ever done like a giveaway or anything? Going back to kind of like. Ah uh, no, I'm too broke for that. <laughs> Don't say that. Man. Too broke for that right Can't, now. How's your name, Bentley Budget Bill? Man, you should be helping us get now. I'm just messing with you. But no, no man, for real, it's because um, honestly, I do see it. Like, you really don't do this for money, man. Because um, you have a great personality, bro. You don't seem like you're selfish or greedy, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I feel like, for real, you've came a long way, bro. Yeah. And it's beautiful to hear you say everything you just said in oh, the last thanks. couple minutes. Because it's like, um, you know, I like I, before you even came in the house and I saw you, I just had like a deja vu moment where I remember seeing you when I was 17. Yeah. And to hear everything we just talked about, it's it's beautiful. You know, for real, and I'm proud sure. of you, bro. I just had to give you flowers. <laughs> normally, normally, I don't have people that come on the podcast and I know them. Right, yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, know yeah. them. Like, they've only met me since I was, like, 22. Or, yeah. So, it's like, I can't pour out my feelings from 17. I you know? Yeah, I dude, that was such a flowers, different time, bro. man. And I don't mean to go into it, but it's no, for real, man. Good. It's beautiful. Um, where can you find me on social media, bro? So, you can find me uh, YouTube. I have a Facebook page. Uh, I have a LinkedIn page. Bentley's Budget Builds. It's Bentley with one E. Uh, uh, you can also, at this point, Google me. My LinkedIn will come up. Bentley Brazel. Again, Bentley 1E Brazel, B-R-A-Z-E-L. Look me up. You'll find me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Check the descriptions, too. I have it all down there. I have two links. Um, mainly, I could ask you on here. Which ones are your favorite? Like, give me two social medias that you like. Uh, so YouTube is where I post most of my content right now, uh, and LinkedIn has been great at making good connections. I need to, I need to tap in. That's like the, great. I've heard that a lot. Yeah. And, um, it's a lot I more professional. What is it? Is it just like it's basically Discord? Facebook, but like for business professionals, uh, essentially. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people find a lot of work through there. Yeah. Um, I found a bunch of stuff. I'll, uh, I'll hook you guys up with the, yeah. with the Feel Good Friday thing, though. There's like a there's, there's some stuff. It's like a positive. Yeah, yeah. It's basically like uh, so. Some people that I've met uh, from Beast Club, Beast Note, they uh, they're gonna start doing the Feel Good Fridays again. And it's basically like if you want to start getting into networking, like it's you know business professional networking is a little intimidating to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They basically turned it, you can do live streams, and they have, it essentially feels like a Twitch stream, mm -hmm. but everybody's networking in the chat and everything, and then That's they jump dope. in Discord afterwards and play like games and stuff. Super cool, I'd highly recommend Is that it. where kind of you found a lot of yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my buddy, uh, shout out to Javier, uh, awesome guy, actually got me, I met him in 
crazy story. Met him in a random Discord, was talking to him, uh, just one-on-one -on -one chatting. He goes, oh, you're Brett's brother, which is my older brother. Right. I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, dude, I got to show you something. So we jump into another Discord called Furlough, did a lot of networking in there. And then from there, he invited me to Beast Club. And yeah, just just escalated. Yeah, just networking kind of is wild. powerful. Oh, absolutely. You always just trust the process and never doubt it. Nobody's perfect. Yeah, you know, and that's the other thing too. I feel like for real, you. I'm proud of you, bro. Thanks, man. Seriously, man. Um, but no, is there anything else? You want? Well, I actually have two more questions. Go um, where do you see yourself in five years? Uh, that's a great question. Um. Hopefully, you're chilling at the shop making computers, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah. don't want to be doing nothing like crazy. Uh, though, no, like, uh, one of the things travel, I'm, or I'm just trying to open. Yeah, up your I do mind travel a good bit. I just, I just started. I'm actually. I know you said out. went to Denver. I did go to Denver. So how beautiful that? city, beautiful. It was great, and that was again for that you know Beast Club LinkedIn networking thing. It was amazing. Like uh, they, they convinced me to get they, on a plane. They had and fly to convince you, huh? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. you should come, and I was like, I don't know. Were you like, like not like? Like gagging, but were you like throwing up on the airplane? Because I kind of got no, that. no. So I was in the middle. Time. It kind of, it kind of sucked. But really, what got me was make sure that you like. There's no internet up there, so download your music and podcasts. <laughs> you didn't know sure that, huh? Did not my know that. My dog got up there. Yeah, and I was, I was like, like, oh my gosh, wah, 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 baby's crying. That was no baby, thank goodness. Uh, lucky, uh, that was bro. great. But I was just like sitting there, just like okay, right, like staring at the. They wall. didn't. Um, who'd you take? Normally they have like a little TV man. United. Open. Okay, they didn't yeah. have it in that one. There was, but I feel like messing with it. I was yeah. like, I'm just chill. I'll be watching some fire movies on that thing, man. Really? I watched Denzel Washington, the um, the Bone Collector. You ever seen that? Have it's it. The oh, original yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, Where yeah. Denzel was in the chair and he's just, yeah, it's crazy. Shout out to Denzel Washington. I can't wait to meet him. Uh, yeah. But no, man, for real, it's been beautiful, bro. And like I said, I know I said it earlier. I'm going to keep saying it. Proud of you. And um, I'm excited. And then last question. How can you always be yourself whenever you wake up? Oh, uh... I like just just do it. Like I don't know. <laughs> you gotta uh, build up to it. Good. Yeah, I guess. I mean, that's a, that really is a great question. I really don't know how to answer that. Yeah. Just do. I don't know. I just try to do whatever I want to do, but I always take other people into consideration. Like I'm, you know, if I want to blast music super loud, I'm not gonna do it at one in the morning because people are gonna sleep. You know, you're being so. respectful. You know, yeah, you yeah. I mean, be worlds, yourself with within reasons. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So. No, I think it's crazy because like I, I think a lot of people fail to understand that too because <clears throat> a lot of people do blast music at 1am yeah. everybody thinks of the main character yeah. and you're not yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, one's the, no one's the main character yeah, like no that's one. really what I don't is. even think I'm the main character no, in my situation just I just want to help you know what I mean that's really what it is yeah. and, and show enlightenment to people so dude it's been beautiful man I hope you guys tap in with my dog Bentley budget built you know what time it is he's the best computer technician I know my dog I normally don't shout people out towards the end but shout out to heavenly souls because he's a computer technician oh, um word. and he's probably gonna watch this and so I, sweet. i'm sorry bro he's better than you <laughs> Oh, what's the but Bentley, but, yeah, no, definitely tap yeah. in because he's cool. He works, um, he does computer and phone stuff too. Word. So, um, but no, Bentley Budget Bill. <laughs> Interview 87, thank you for coming on, bro. Thanks I hope it lived up to the hype, man. Because, you know, we are up next. Um, you know, Rise Elevate community has been taking a big, big change. And we're, like, we're doing a lot of different things that people have never seen before. And I know it's like they've seen it around the world, but I'm talking about seeing it in person. Like, have yeah. you ever seen a public interview in person? Like no. people go up with the phones and stuff. I'm a computer tech. I don't go outside. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least he's honest. That's true, though. Uh, but no, man. Like just in general, though, man. Because like I even like I I really do think we're doing something different. We're really here to change the world. So if you're even watching this still, um, thank you. I love you, and I appreciate every single one of you. The only way to achieve your dreams is through you. No one else is going to do it. You got to get up every single day, and you got to grind harder than you did yesterday. Even if today isn't going the way you wanted to, or you're not the way that you should. Be, you should never give up, right, Bentley? Correct. Right. Love you guys. Peace. Thank you, Bentley.